next. They really just helped me a lot through all the hard times. For kids with leukemia. I come in here every four weeks. To teens who call the hospital a second home. I had three heart surgeries there. Inspiring stories of determination and sacrifice. But it's good for them to see that you can come out on the other side of it. For the next half hour. We owe his life to children's. Making a difference in our community and beyond. We've been blessed to not have to be living here anymore. A WOWT NBC Omaha special. Tune in for kids. A fundraiser for Children's Hospital and Medical Center. Here now, Brian Mastry. Good evening. We're coming to you live tonight from the atrium here at Children's Hospital and Medicine Medical Center. Look at this place. It is a place of medicine. It is a place for healing. It is a place where the mission is really, if you cannot afford to come here, you will not be denied access because of your inability to pay. And that's where the fundraiser comes in. It helps underwrite all of that. Here's what Tune In for Kids brought in two years ago, $291,000. Last year, $305,000. This year, we're just getting it started along with our radio partners. Steve and Gina are over here. They are on the air right now for Tune In for Kids. And we begin tonight with something that doesn't always pop into your head when you think about medicine. I bet they're having fun. No one is more surprised to see a dog at the hospital than the kids. Hello, can we ride with you? Even when it looks like he's hiding, he's working. That's his job, an elevator. Take up as little room as possible. Sven is children's facility dog, first in the city. Sven has missed you. The golden retriever puts in 40 hours a week here, helping take the edge off of what can be a stressful treatment or a scary procedure for a youngster. Caleb understands. Help them not be scared. Lay down. Moments earlier, Sven did what he does best, demonstrate. When a kid wonders what a medical machine does, Sven takes over. It almost looks like he could take a nap in the CT scan. Do you think you can hold more still than him? Here he goes. So did Sven make things easier to handle for Caleb? In typical kid fashion, we heard the answer any parent would appreciate. Did that make you feel better? Yeah. How come? Just because. There you have it, our first testimonial. In a banana costume. He specialized in the hospital setting. The sounds, the smells. He can walk into a room and totally read the environment. He'll go to the right person. Um, he'll be calm when he needs to be calm, and he'll show his little puppy side when a little laughter needs to be <laughs> there. Sven has been walking the halls of children since November. I got diagnosed with AML leukemia on September 9th. Sven. Grace Fry, who's headed into fourth grade this year, knows Sven well. He would jump up on my bed and he would jump on me and lay next to me and he'd just like sleep. He was just always there. One of Sven's enduring qualities, his love for stuffed animals. He chewed on it. He has a giant Minnie Mouse that's like his baby at work. Everyone's stuffed animals. It was a bulldog. And Sven chewed on it? <laughs> Sven, who is two, was raised in Georgia to do this, along with his six brothers and sisters. Do you know the story of how Sven got his name? Um, they're all Frozen characters. What are their brothers and sisters' names? Uh, well, there's Sven, and then there's Anna, Elsa, Olaf, Kristoff, Arendelle, and Hans. Before Grace reconnected with Sven during our interview, she shared this with us. No, I'm in remission, so that's good. Yes, that is, that's great. I love that. That's one of my favorite words. It's probably one of yours, too, isn't it? That's some of the best news of all, Grace. No doubt Sven feels relief as well. He gets stressed out when I leave. Yes, even the dog who is trained to take the stress out of a situation for kids struggles a bit with it himself. He works and lives with his handler, Britta Carr, and recently she took a vacation and was away from Sven. It upset him. This is his mental health place. Sven's medicine is standing Bear Lake and a date with nature. He has carried a whole log around this lake a couple times. He's more into the people than the dogs here. <laughs> All the dogs will try to go after him and he'll be going for the people. To perhaps prove the point, look at one way he relaxes. He does like to hammock, which is not very common for dogs. If Britta let him, he'd stay like this for hours alone with his thoughts, preparing for tomorrow when he heads back to work again, lifting spirits. 
he just feels fulfilled, I think. I think he knows that he does a good job, even if we don't say good boy. I think he knows what his purpose is, and his purpose is to love on people and um, to do what he can. As you can imagine, the demand for Sven just keeps growing. And look who is here as a live special guest. Sven, come on over here, buddy. Since November, he's officially logged 1,116 patient interventions. What'd you think of yourself in the hammock? I loved how his tongue was hanging out. It's not easy getting out of that hammock, though. We will tell you that. <laughs> so children's would really like to have another dog. You can tell how the another second facility dog would be great, but it's not cheap. They also would need another handler, so your donations would help go towards all of that. And this, too. See that? Is that you? A trading card? Oh, of course, he wants to <laughs> chew on it. Of course, you would want to chew on that. Thanks, Sven. <laughs> Good to see you. You, too. Well, last year at this time, we met nurse Claudia, the nurse who works with kids with cancer when she received her own cancer diagnosis. Here's an update. But you just can't dwell on uh, that part of it if you're going to work here. You have to look at the bright side. Are you ready for me? When we first met Claudia Besco in 2016 Did in the oncology it? unit. How are you? Good. I missed you. She was five months into her treatment for breast cancer. Since you talked to me last, I have hair. I'm a lot calmer than I was then. I don't worry about things like I used to. No ear infections. Sharing her experiences as a patient often helps the cancer nurse lower anxiety levels with kids in her care. And it can be comforting for parents, too. They'll say to, their, to the kids, you know, uh, your nurse went through all this, and look, she's all done. But it's good for them to see that you can come out on the other side of it. After 36 years as a full-time nurse. It's time for a new, new chapter. She's going part-time. I have my first grandbaby, little Morgan Quinn. And starting in September, I'm going to babysit her twice a week while Mama goes back to work. So I'm pretty thrilled and excited about that. What an adorable little girl. Three days of Nurse Claudia here at the hospital and days with her granddaughter certainly will be amazing and she will still continue to make a difference. Still ahead on Tune In for Kids. I haven't ever had like someone come in like this. It's so fun to listen to. The healing power of music. Why this accomplished musician keeps coming back. Plus, the latest on the Iowa boy, who spent more than a year of his life here at Children's. But first, a special message from the kids. Put your money where the miracles are. Please call 402-955-7100. Thanks for watching. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Watching Tune In for Kids, a production of WOWT NBC Omaha. Our coverage continues live from the atrium of Children's Hospital and Medical Center. This area has been teeming with kids, broadcasters, a dog. You can just imagine as we raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. Don't you think we could use some musical motivation? Music has long been recognized for its healing powers. It can soften our stress levels, lower our blood pressure, and connect our mind with our body. A heart. Yeah. And how did you know that? I love the heart, it's so lovely. She recognized the harp from the symphony. She's very musical. She, well, her grandma is a music major, so I think it's kind of in her blood. You can feel it, right? Mary Bircher has played with the Omaha Symphony since the early 80s. For the last decade, her strings have also resonated through children's and the families who sometimes have to call a hospital room their home, such as Soraya. Her struggle for life has been dealing with a body that does not have the enzyme to break down proteins. We've been blessed to not have to be living here anymore. Sometimes the music flows through the atrium 
takes a trip to the infusion center. I was diagnosed in March. 17-year-old Morgan Lewis is halfway done with her treatment for a cancer that's attacking her pituitary gland. And I was just like drinking so much all the time, like drinking a few gallons of water a day and I couldn't stop. I come in here every four weeks. Sean Thomas, who gets a monthly transfusion for his sickle cell. It's like a blood disease and it makes my body ache and cramp. Welcomes the diversion music brings to his overall care. I love it. They do a good job here. We just usually sit here and me and my mom just talk usually, but I haven't ever had like someone come in like this. It's so fun to listen to. Since last week, we've had a number of kids who have had care here at Children's decide to put on a microphone and step under the hot studio lights to be a news anchor for the day. We hope you like to read because we have a story that we want you to read for us. Are you ready? Okay. If you ever thought Cheetos with snacks would make a great centerpiece for a restaurant, you're not alone. The Spotted Cheetah is a pop-up restaurant in New York that's sponsored by Cheetos. Let's see if you can score some points by reading the newscast. Are you ready for this? Yep. All right, look into that camera. It may be August, but there are clear signs that fall is just around the corner. One sign, the annual cutting of the corn maze. This is in upstate South Carolina, the seventh year for this location. The theme this year, Hometown Heroes. Give them a few years and they may be our replacements. If you know me, you know that I love inspirational stories and this story, I think, fits into that. You're pretending to be shy, but you're definitely not shy. It didn't take long during our visit. And then do we get to eat them? Because I'm getting hungry. Mm -hmm. Not quite yet. And Tabalo's real personality began to show. How does a train eat? Choo choo. <laughs> the five-year-old likes jokes. What noise do the porcupines make when they kiss? <gasps> Ouch. Oh, that's <laughs> funny, Tabalo. My husband and I say, um, God couldn't have picked a more perfect child for us. What kind of dog is he? He got big hair and so long hair. Last June, Laura Rui and her husband adopted the child. It's a long ways from Congo, Africa to Hooper, Nebraska. He was born with club foot and vertical talus. When we first received his referral, we didn't know if he would be able to walk. The experts at Children's recommended surgery. They just did both legs at the same time. It only took him a week before he was running around. And so it just, the, you see how children can really um, just kind of bounce back really quickly. Since the surgery, therapy has allowed Tabalo to improve his walk and gait. 11, Good job, 12, bend your knees. There. Or two. So much so, he's now focused on improving his core strength. You can use writing to help. Using all sorts of tools in the physical and occupational therapy toolbox. Good work, no hands. But it is a lot different than adult rehabilitation. We have to consider that these kids are still growing and they're still learning a lot of things that we already know how to do automatically. I got muscles. On cue, he shows us his muscles and playfulness. But in all fairness, Ready? he's a strong-willed kid with an excellent disposition. And remember, he's only five. He teaches us a lot of lessons in the way that he has never asked us why? As we ask him to do things, he just has this disposition of saying, yes, I, I trust you, and I know that it's going to make me stronger. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I want to fall out. It's really hard as a mom to say, you know, you know, you wish things came easy for your children, but at the same time, you see the life lessons being learned at such a young age. Stay strong, Tabalo. I'm sure you're even harder to keep up with at home. Still to come in this half-hour live broadcast, a progress report on expanding the reach of children's. And what on earth is this? Is it really the last line of defense against infections? But first, a special message from the kids. Donate now. Call the number on the screen. Please call 402. Woof, woof, woof. Nine, five, five. We'll be right back with Tune In for Kids. Welcome back to Tune In for Kids, a fundraiser for Children's Hospital and Medical Center. I'm outside standing on the ground of the expansion. Ten stories, hundreds of millions of dollars, a dramatic boost 
to the space and scope of children's. It'll be called Hubbard Center for Children. When all is said and done, here's what construction will look like from the other side of campus, from the vantage point of the main entrance. There's a spot for the new $450 million building. Children's officially broke ground in December. It's expected to be finished in 2021. And then renovations to other buildings will begin. In the last year, Children's has seen a volume increase of 8% and a lot more chronic and complex cases have been coming through. Now, we all know that kids are not just small adults, and that couldn't be more evident than in this next story. Good. If you play sports, injuries come with the territory. For Westside senior Emma Wilson, she's been playing soccer since she was five. Her first team was called the Barbie Bunch. I love practice because every single time it's like we all get to see each other, it's just, I don't know. It's like our own little family that we have, so. But her sophomore season was a bust. Injuries kept her sidelined. It was really hard on me because like every day I wanna go out there and compete. And so when I don't, when I gotta miss, like it's just hard, but I try my best from the bench. She had fractured her tibia. And soon that one injury led to a host of other problems. And at that point, I didn't get physical therapy. And so then that kind of made my leg weaker. And then coming back, like my leg would always get cramps. And so that's kind of how I knew something was wrong. 10 times one side, 10 times the other. That's when children's relatively new sports physical therapy program got that's involved. Good. When this happened to Emma, it was her right side. So her left side had to do all the extra work. Well, she wasn't playing soccer. She wasn't doing her normal activities. That side got weaker as well. Shuffle. If she would have had physical therapy right away, the ankle, quad, and hamstring issues may have been avoided. With certain injuries, when they are injured, they're at a 40 times greater risk of having a subsequent injury, whether it's to the same structure or something else. And that's really what happened to Emma. She had an injury somewhere else. With physical therapy, Emma Wilson is back doing what she loves and stronger than ever. Coming here, just it's made a difference, obviously. So I'm getting back to my like full potential. Emma will be attending the University of Missouri, Kansas City next year, and she will play soccer. We wish her the best of luck. As we head to the break, meet two more kids who've been getting care here at Children's. Take a chance at reading the news. Are you ready to read for us today? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's your camera. Some lucky passengers aboard an Alaska Airlines flight got to a special view of the eclipse. This group bought tickets on a special charter flight. It flew over the Pacific to get a view of the eclipse. Well, since science is up your alley, we're going to let you read the script today. It got a little science in it. You want to take it away? The total solar eclipse was a strange and special experience for millions of spectators Monday. After the full eclipse had passed, giraffes running rapidly around their enclosure. You're watching Tune In for Kids, a fundraiser for children's. Finally tonight, we take a peek behind the curtain and what's being done to make sure kids and families don't catch something while they're here. When you're sick, the last thing you want to get is an infection from the hospital. That's why the operating rooms are disinfected manually. Once that is done, Children's takes it to the next level. Meet the five foot five germ killing machine. So far, they've just all been named Trudy um, or Dorothy. The robot is left in the room alone and controlled remotely. Thank you. It sends lethal doses of ultraviolet rays to any pathogens that may have been missed, whether in the open or tucked in the shadows of the OR. It's a change of, of culture um, that, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, essentially disinfecting with ultraviolet light. And so just because, um, you know, you can't physically see or, or touch it uh, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And so this type of technology uh, goes above and beyond those, those human factors. There are two of these robots in use at the main campus and a third at Children's West Village Point Outpatient Surgery Clinic. And before we go, we always like to give updates on kids that have been featured here and tune in for kids. This is a Des Moines youngster who spent most of his life here 
over two years. This is Caden McGee, also known as Warrior Caden. Many outside experts didn't think he'd live very long, but after spending 600 days here at Children's, we were there when he finally went home. Now look at this. His mother shared the video with us. It's recent. The boy with the lifelong heart issue is now recovering from another heart surgery this spring. And look at him move around in the walker. Look at that. Way to go, Warrior Caden. How good is that? And we appreciate everyone tuning in and listening here for Tune In for Kids. Again, you can take part all weekend long and donate, especially the kids. Thank you. Good night.